breaking now. We are set to learn details on the retrial of former UC officer Ray Tenzing. Let's listen to Joe Dieters right now, the Hamilton County um, prosecutor. I think Julie Wilson has uh, passed out our release concerning the uh, state of Ohio versus Raymond Tenzing. And after careful consideration, uh, interviews of certain jurors, review of the transcripts and trial uh, activities, we've determined that there is, in fact, a probability of success at another trial, and um, we will be doing that. We, we expect on Monday to be meeting with Judge Shanahan to uh, discuss the logistics of all of this, but I can tell you that we are going to request, the state of Ohio will request a change of venue in this case. It is our belief that um, the public attention that's been uh, focused on the Tenzing case uh, could have in fact seeped into the jury room and um, we're going to try to uh, alleviate that by moving the trial. But it's up to Judge Shanahan. Do you mean seeped into the jury room having an effect on their decision? We understand that they were afraid. Was it more than that, Judge? There was discussions, we believe, in the jury room concerning penalty, which is improper, um, and other issues concerning sympathy for the defendant which is improper, and we're going to try to alleviate that by moving the case. So how many uh, jurors did you have a chance to interview? About half. As a matter of fact, one's being interviewed right now. Have you discussed the possible change of venue with Tenzing's attorneys doing that? Yes, we have. And what was the response to that? They don't want to move it, but that's not their call. It's the judge's call. What made them change their mind? They, they got a hung jury here. They got a hung jury here, you know? Along those lines, explain to people out there why why you feel this is winnable now. It's, it's expensive. Um, no matter how you calculate it, most jurors said no to murder. What did you gather from your week of going over transcripts and talking to jurors that made you see this in a different way and make, made you see it winnable? Well, I can tell you this. As of Friday night, we learned that the jury was tended to for voluntary manslaughter. Um, there were still three or four that were willing to go to murder, uh, but slid down in terms of the vote count. And I mean, that's, that's, um, that helps me make my decision. So whether it was a compromise or whatever, and I, and I also think that, um, I, I fault myself, and I mean, the, the two assistants I tried the case with were fantastic. Um, we just need to um, do a better job. What do you mean you fault yourself? You're taking this very personally. I, well, I, I think that there were ways I could have couched my arguments differently, but it, it doesn't matter. Um, if we're, if we're, successful in moving this trial to another jurisdiction out of this media market, uh, I think that our arguments will be much more persuasive. So if you're not able to move the trial and the judge Shanahan says no, how challenging would it be to find an impartial jury? It'd be very difficult. It would be incredibly difficult. But nonetheless, I'm optimistic that we'll be able to move this in. Has the trial ever been moved out of Hamilton County? That's a good question. I don't remember one. Mr. Diaz, what makes you believe, though, a jury in some other county won't let sympathy or penalty creep into a jury room as they were here? I mean, these jurors were protected from the media, counseled every day not to not to check this case out in the media. What makes you believe it may be? They, they got over a year of this case, you know, as citizens before they were called as jurors. And... Um, heard about his background, heard about Sam's background. And I, I mean, I just think that it's best if, we had a point in this trial, if you recall, where the jurors wouldn't even come out of the jury room. We had a, a 
revolt going on in the jury room at one point because they were afraid that their names would be known. We moved to another jurisdiction. I don't know the jurors would care. They don't live in Cincinnati. So it's a, diff it's a different scenario entirely. Do you have your eye on a particular county? Um, Cleveland or Columbus would be fine with me. Joe, let's talk about, you mentioned the revolt in the jury room. Um, struck by the jury instructions. And we talked about that afterwards, how complicated those instructions were for the, for the jurors. How do you, how do you fix that? Is there a way to do that? I think the, the biggest snag was in the voluntary manslaughter, they also got an instruction on justification. And it kind of runs counter to that. I mean, a sudden fit of passion, um, and then you have justification. Well, it's one or the other. So I don't think you can justify a voluntary manslaughter. You can justify a murder under Ohio law. I don't think you can justify it. still press forward with the voluntary manslaughter. Charge. Yes, we'll do both again. You talked to the DeVos family before the news conference. Yes. What did you say to them? What did they say? I did not. Um, my, our victim advocates talked to them. And they, they were they just wanted to know that we were going to retry it. They wanted to know the charges that we were going forward on were the same, and they are. Having, um, for them to say, I would rather, the mother to say, I would rather he walk away free than to try for a lesser compromise charge, um, mm -hmm. you're, you feel that you must feel the same way. You wouldn't be. No, I mean, his statements to um, Cincinnati Police Homicide Division and on the stand were that he intentionally shot him in the head, period, okay? So that's not reckless. That's not negligent. I don't know what people don't understand about this. It's very simple. He intentionally did this act. The only question is... Was this done in a sudden fit of rage, or was it justified under the law? He has taken the position, the defendant in defense, has taken the position that it was justified. We disagree with that, fundamentally. And we're going to move forward with this. We're going to get, hopefully, a new jurisdiction, uh, no offense, a new media market, and just try this case with jurors who, who aren't afraid to come out of the jury room at some point. So what happens if there is another mistrial? Just technically, what would happen then? Would you go a third time? It depends. What I, I, I don't know. That's just pure speculation. Will you personally be retrying the case? Yes, yes, it? yes. Stu Matthews has said, he has said, this isn't about justice. Hamilton County had a shot at justice and the jury was hung. He says it's about politics and about pressure from the community. What do you say to him? He's just wrong. That's not true. That's not true. I mean, I will admit to you, I have met with people interested in this case from the community. Um, I've heard from both sides many times. I mean, just from around the country. And but th that's not what's affecting my decision. My decision is based on the likelihood of success at trial, and that's it. If I, thought we if I thought we couldn't win this case, we would not retry this case. And you have some ideas, clearly, of what you're going to do differently. Yes, I, we do. We do. Share? No. <laughs> what's the timing expectation of a new trial? Uh, I'd like to do it um, no later than this spring, if possible. There's a lot of logistics involved. If we're successful in moving the trial out of Cincinnati, um, we're looking at, there's a lot of issues. I mean, most courthouses are filled, and they've got their jobs to do around the state, and we've got to find one that we can do it in. Joanna, everybody's interested in what the, the jurors were talking about and were thinking about 25 hours a long deliberation process. Share some insight, if you can, about how difficult it was. I'm sure your hats off to the jurors who tried. Uh, they, they all stayed in that room for 25 hours. It's a long time. How difficult was it to you? I think it was really difficult. You know, you ask lay people to 
uh, get in this situation, you know, and when you get called to jury duty, sometimes it, you know, sounds glamorous and everything, and then you come down to it, and we got jurors crying in the jury box. It's it's a very difficult thing for lay people to deal with. We deal with it every day. It's quite different, but um, there's no question in my mind that issues were being discussed in there um, that. Should not have been discussed. I know Tarina has said that she's been reading some online forums and so forth, and the, 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 she says some people feel Sam DeBose deserved to die because he had too many kids or because he was black or the lifestyle he lived. How do you how do you convince jurors to leave all that out? I mean, hopefully the goal would be to find people who don't know anything about the case. I, that's that's the likelihood, right? Like. It is, but it 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 absolutely crept it absolutely crept into uh, uh, the jury room. And, um, you know, and, and just to clarify, um, we got a clarification last week about the first vote. The first vote was, did he intentionally shoot him in the head? And that was yes. Unanimous. But then they have to go on. Then they to go to justification. justification. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So if you think a Cuyahoga County jury would not be would be less uh, emotional, less feel, less just deal with the facts because they've been removed by everything Hamilton County has experienced. I think so. I mean, I think when you see people, you know, protesting daily and you see people um, one way or the other demanding some type of verdict, I think it puts pressure on people and they live in that community. I think it's different. I think it would be different. Our station in Cleveland this morning requested my story about the decision coming down today. So they're playing this story in Cleveland. Have you kind of taken a look at how the media is responding in those cities before we, you know, address the change of venue? No, no. It's I can guarantee you it's nothing like it's been here. There's no chance. And um, I'll, I mean, I'll go to Hawaii and try it if they want, but um, I don't think it's going to happen. This is precedent setting. This change of venue request. Uh, we've talked about this before. Kirkland, we've had serial killers, we've had uh, home state savings, we've had so many major cases where lives were really affected in Hamilton County. So this is um, a very unusual move for your office. It's very unusual and, you know, the technology that we have today has overrun uh, the common practice of trying cases. I mean, on social media and what's happened has just exploded about this case. And we've never had that before. We just, it's, it's a fact. We've never had that before. And, um, you know, when we did the Kirkland case, he killed those four girls. Um, yes, jurors and I bet 90% of them never heard of the case at all. You, if you polled today in Hamilton County, uh, I bet 95% of people have heard, heard of this case there, and done something about it. Is there anything you would change about the jury questionnaire in the second case? There might be some adjustments, but um, it was pretty thorough. It was a pretty thorough questionnaire. We pretty much knew what we had going into it. Would you like to see a more racially diverse jury? Yeah, sure. I mean, we had we had... We had, um, I think we had two African-American males in the box who didn't want to serve. And we had three behind us who were coming that didn't want to serve. And, you know, look, I really don't want race to be an issue in this case. I really don't. Um, but it's hanging out there. It's, it's kind of like the elephant in the room. And uh, I just, w I just, I just want people to follow their oaths, do what the judge asks them to do, and if they do that, I think we have a probability of success at trial. Elephant in the room is putting it mildly. This is how the country sees this: is a white police officer pulling an unarmed black man. It's, it's there. You can't escape that. Um, 
But, you know, we've reviewed cases where black officers have killed white people, unarmed white people, and, you know, I've cleared them, depending on the circumstances. This is really, and I've said this before, I said it in closing, if we didn't have a body cam in this case, we'd have nothing. Because we've got an officer saying he's being dragged 20 feet or 30 feet. And we know that's a total lie. It's a total lie. What were the jurors afraid of? Did they say specifically? I know afraid of they, their identities. No, they, they were afraid of their identities. And I think it went both ways. I don't think they were worried about protesters out in front of the courthouse. I don't know that at all. I just know that they did not want to be identified, and they were scared to death of it to the point where they wouldn't leave the jury room. I mean, they, I don't know if you guys remember this, but we had about a three hour period where they were like, we're not going out there. Do you, do you fault Judge Shanahan at all for that? Not at all, she, she's great. It was no, cover, no, Judge Shanahan, um, I think did a fantastic job. She was incredibly fair to both sides. And um, um, she's a great judge. Do you believe it's worth maybe mentioning the jury that who you are will be known at some point it's public record in Ohio? I don't know. I think that there's a process for it becoming a public record. I think that if the judge orders them not be revealed, that the media has a chance to have a hearing on it. And if the judge believes that there's a compelling reason not to reveal them, I don't think the judge has to reveal them. Is there a hearing on, still on this case? No. You they withdrew it. You may mention several times after the mistrial that you were basically having to argue complex legal matters, the murder, to lay people in a jury box. You're going to ask for a change of venue, you say. Say you take this to Franklin or Cuyahoga County. You've got to argue the same complex legal issue to 12 lay people, as you say. What are you going to do different this time? To make them understand why this is a murder. Well, there, we've discussed strategies um, in terms of argument and evidentiary um, issues that we will bring forth. Um, I'm not going to tell the defense what we're going to do, but we're going to do our best um, to seek justice. And, you know, I, I don't disagree that it's, it's going to be difficult. Uh, so... Really quick question. It's yeah. really fascinating to get to know the DeVos family and Tarina in particular. I find that she, she's become a student of the law to a point, and she talked about how she, she probably could Matthews. try. She probably could try this case. She, she, she knows the ins and outs. Yeah. She feels that Stu Matthews did not successfully uh, give the affirmative defense requirement. They didn't meet that. How will you address that in the next Well, year? that's an argument that I think we need to stress more. You know, once they argue justification, it's not our burden anymore. It's theirs. And they've got to prove by a preponderance of the evidence, which is a weighing test. It's just scales of justice, you know. And if they don't outweigh even a little bit, they fail. And I don't, I don't know that we did a good enough job in that. Jamie, could, this could have been easy for you to say. We gave it our best shot. We put on a great case. How... Um how difficult was it for you, or was it, to step back and look at this and say, it's going to be hard, um, it's going to be expensive, we're going to have to rework our presentation, but I feel this is right. And I'm, I'm not saying that's what you said, but it, it, you're, you're the decider in this, and you had, to, you had a lot to consider and a lot to weigh personally as well. It, it's very rare that we retry these kind of cases. I mean, it is rare. But the vote totals, and after talking to the jurors, uh, convinced me that we could win this thing, that we'd be successful. I don't, I don't like to use the term win because it sounds like it's some athletic event. We are seeking justice. We are, I'm, it's my belief that Sam DeBose was murdered period. And 
you know, Sam, according to accounts, because I never knew him, was a good guy. He was in trouble a lot, you know, like a lot of people are. And But that doesn't make his life any less relevant or have less value. And as I've said a hundred times, in the country that I love, you don't get shot in the head for getting pulled over on a traffic stop. And that's what happened here. And I, it, it troubles me deeply that this happened. And I've said this also a lot. You know, there's bad prosecutors, there's bad reporters, there's bad judges. The measure of an institution is not that you have someone bad in your group. The measure of the institution is when you have someone that's not right, how you deal with it. And we're dealing with it. And I'm going to deal with it. Your tone is different today. Is this humbling? What have you learned from all of this? Um, not much. I mean, I've learned a lot from juror interviews and things like that. But... Um, We're, we are determined um, to improve what we did with the last jury and hopefully um, get justice for our community. I've touched on it. Change of venue is very expensive. What does the case cost so far? I, I, I have no idea. I mean, obviously that's got to be a consideration for the judge. I mean, <laughs> it is, but I mean... Things are expensive in government, you know, they are. And um, I'm sure it's going to be expensive for your TV stations to drive to Cleveland. Joe, do you have any idea, <laughs> uh, do you have any idea Joe, about um, when, when Ray Tenzing watched the video, the body cam, after, before giving the statement to Cincinnati police investigators, was he able, do you know, was he able to do so frame by frame, or did he just watch that a few times in real time, or do you have any That's correct. In real time? The latter, yeah. Okay, um, because it does, you know, you said it, it, it in one news conference after one of the court proceedings, you said he apparently didn't pay much attention to it. I think a lot of people are puzzled how you could see that. And, and still it's mind-boggling to me that anyone can listen to his statement to CPD and um, watch that video and believe what he was saying was truthful. But and but everybody wants to cloud it under. Oh, it's a split second decision. I don't know what's happening. It was perceived, you know, it changed about three times. And I I don't want to get into arguments on the case, but it's 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 something that I think our team needs to do better. The poor people did believe that. Poor yeah. Jury Correct. Justified. Well, we had ten to two on Friday night for voluntary manslaughter. And I think that was moving towards some kind of compromise. There are three or four who want to murder. So, you know. At the end of the day here, Joe, do you think, I mean, like UC's made big changes, um, obviously in policing, and does this just move the ball forward on that front, that training is critical? I think, I think UC's made some great changes. I mean, the, the people they've brought in are very good professional law enforcement people, and I think I think they're doing a really good job. You still comfortable with Yes, I am. A yep, I am. Mr. Davis, you've said several times today that we'll have to do better next time. Do you believe if you erase all of the outside the peripheral stuff from this jury, what went on in that jury room, do you believe this case was hung based on the arguments of the defense, maybe the evidence or lack thereof presented by the state to prove murder? I tend to blame myself about things like this. I've never had a hung jury in my life, ever. And um, I can't even remember the last time I had a not guilty verdict, maybe 30 years ago. But I just, I just believe that, I believe the truth is this. I believe he intentionally shot him in the head. I believe it wasn't justified. And I believe that this community not the DeBose family, this community 
deserves justice. And that's what we're going to do. And I'm asking, though, do you believe you all won or lost on the merits alone, the evidence alone, and the arguments made in that courtroom? If you erase everything else that you believe influences this jury, do you believe do you believe you did enough to win, if you want to call it that, or, or to convict Ray Kennedy? I not? think we did. I think we did. But I think we could do it better. And um, I don't want to have a situation where we got a jury that won't come out of the jury room because they're afraid their identities will be known in the community. And that's what we had here in Cincinnati. That's why we're asking for the change of venue, and hopefully we'll get it. You don't oh, think, do go you ahead. think, though, if you move this to anywhere, that the media won't ask again for these questionnaires? Well, they can ask for it, not, but they're not going to. But, but if they, cho let's say they choose jurors out of Lucas County in Toledo, they're, those people, they don't know anything about this case. They don't know. In reality, that's, you're just guessing right now. Well, I mean, I don't think that case, this case, be outside of Cincinnati. I mean, I know it's gotten national coverage, but it's not like here. So. How many jurors again did you uh, interview? And About half, Deb. Okay. And do you know need to do to interview the rest, or? We have. We only interviewed the ones that were willing to talk to us. They were given us. They gave. We were, they were given us, they were given our numbers to call if they wanted to talk. They give me some ideas? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Okay.